YouTube land, it's Loza from the Baking Mad Gym Addict. Oh my gosh, I am so ridiculously excited to share this week's meal prep with you today. This is what my finished food prep looked like. I made four boxes of chia crusted salmon fillets with a minted pea mash, some roasted cherry tomatoes, and a wee dollop of smashed up sweet potato. Someone told me recently that Americans say fillets instead of fillets, which totally sounds a lot more posh, but Scottish people pronounce the word as fillets. And so for today's session, I made four salmon fillets. I also invented a bacon and egg frittata loaf. You can see here that I made two of these. And I tell you what, this was so yummy, I decided to put my name on it. And so from now on, I'm going to call these Loza Loafs. But really, you could spell whatever you like on it. Here's some photos of the last time I made some Loza Loafs. To make the smashed up sweet potatoes, I started off with peeling and chopping four large sweet potatoes. If you've watched me for a while, you'll know that I can't get enough of sweet potatoes. Potatoes. It's my favourite carb to eat. Once they've been chopped up, I dump them into a tray and spray them with some coconut oil. I sprinkle on some pink Himalayan sea salt, some pepper and some garlic seasoning. I pop them into an oven which has been preheated to 200 degrees Celsius which is 390 degrees Fahrenheit. It'll take about 40 minutes for your sweet potatoes to roast up so you can forget about them in the meantime. Next I'm going to start making my chia crusted salmon recipe. I open my parcel of fresh salmon fillets from the supermarket. These four fillets weighed 800 grams in total. I put two pieces of salmon on the middle of some baking paper and squeeze the juice from half a lemon over the fillets. I then sprinkle some pink Himalayan sea salt and some freshly ground black pepper on top. I sprinkle one and a half teaspoons of chia seeds over the top of the fish and lay on some fresh dill. These feathery looking herb leaves have a mild warm flavour and it's just perfect with fish. I finish off the salmon with a quick spray of coconut oil. So now I fold the baking paper in half to cover the fish. I start from one end and gently fold over the corner. I continue to carefully fold the baking paper around the border and crimp the edges of the paper together. Once I've reached the other end of my pouch, I take the overhang of baking paper and neatly tuck the excess paper underneath to seal in my pouch. Steaming the salmon in parchment paper is a healthy and tasty way to cook it. It's so simple and it takes only about 12 minutes to cook. I call this my super salmon recipe because salmon is one of nature's superfoods. It's chock full of healthy omega-3s which is said to prevent coronary heart disease, high blood pressure and rheumatoid arthritis. The cheeky chia crust adds extra superfood powers. Chia is said to have amazing health benefits because it's a good source of omega-3, fibre, antioxidants and protein. Superfood facts aside, this dish is just downright tasty. You'll see from my oven that I have my sweet potatoes on the top shelf. Two whole chickens are roasting in the middle shelf and then I've got my salmon on the bottom shelf. I won't waste your time with explaining how I cook my chickens because you'll have seen this before in my previous videos. Just check out my meal prepping playlist in the description box if you haven't. While all those shenanigans are going on in the oven, I grab some fresh mint leaves and chop up about six tablespoons worth. Next, I grab a one kilogram bag of frozen garden peas and pop the peas into a pan and then I pour in some burny boiling water. The peas then get simmered for about two to three minutes before I drain out the water. To the cooked peas, I add my pink Himalayan sea salt, freshly ground black pepper, and six tablespoons of my chopped up mint leaves. I really like the taste of the pea and mint combination. Here I'm using a masher to mash up my pea mixture until it looks like this. Mushy peas make a simple and awesomely delicious side dish to your salmon. And the bonus is, you won't have cheeky little peas rolling off your fork when you try to eat them. By now your sweet potato should be roasted. I transfer them into a big bowl and add a splash of milk before smooshing it all up. Once you've smooshed up your sweet potato, your pieces of salmon should also be ready. When you come to unwrap your fish pouches, watch out that you don't burn your wee fingers from the steam. You have been warned. If you want a crustier chia topping, you could pop the oven salmon pouches back into the oven for a further five minutes. I put 500 grams of cherry tomatoes into a tray and sprayed them with some coconut oil. You can season them with salt and pepper if you like. I roast them in the oven next to the chicken which is still cooking and I usually leave the tomatoes in the oven for about 8 to 10 minutes until they collapse. Right, now let's talk about the loza loaf. Not only was it super delicious but it looked really pretty. I started off with washing my mushrooms with a damp paper towel. The stems of the mushrooms have already been removed. I pulse about 20 button mushrooms in my Vitamix to make mushroom meat. Next I Dice up six little onions. Into a hot pan, I spray some coconut oil and add in my onions and some garlic powder. I continue to cook the onions for about five minutes until they turn translucent before setting them aside. 
side. Next, I use the same pan to saute my mushroom meat. I decided to sprinkle some pink Himalayan sea salt onto the mushrooms to try and drive out some of the moisture. The mushrooms only need to be cooked for a couple of minutes. The other thing I do to make my loza loaf is to chop one zucchini in half lengthways before using a vegetable peeler to peel long strips to make zucchini ribbons. I make these ribbons because they act as dividers inside the meatloaf to separate the different ingredients. Once the zucchini ribbons get too tricky to make, I just dice up the remainder in little cubes like I'm doing here. I line my loaf tin with a piece of non-stick baking paper. On top of that, I lay some Rhineless shortcut bacon. I also use slices of bacon to line up the side of my loaf tin. Next, I pack in some of my smushed up sweet potato and use it to build a mini wall inside my little loaf tin. I grab some of the zucchini ribbons and use it to secure the sides of my smushed up sweet potato. I then add my cooked onions on one side of the loaf tin and then add some more cooked onions to the other side of the loaf tin before topping the onions with the sautéed mushroom meat. To finish off, I top it with some diced up zucchini from earlier and pour some liquid egg whites over the ingredients. If you don't have liquid egg whites, whatevs, you can whisk up regular eggs if you like. You just need something that will bind and hold all the ingredients together. Because I like to be a bit fancy, I pack on some more sweet potato on top and then I write my name in bacon. My husband called me the bacon mad gym addict when he saw this concoction. I had enough ingredients to make a second loza loaf and so I took another loaf tin and repeated the process of building up the ingredients. Again, you can choose Choose to personalise your loza loaf however you like. You can see that this loza loaf is made with love. These then get popped into the oven to cook. And yes, the chickens are still cooking away in the oven. The loza loafs will be cooked in about 25 to 30 minutes. Once the egg is set, you're good to go. I usually leave the loza loaf sitting in the tin for a further 15 minutes or so after cooking because that helps them set. The message on top of your bacon and egg frittata loaf is of course entirely optional. But I really think it adds a little something extra. I portion out four of my food prep boxes with some mushy peas, the chia crusted salmon, a dollop of sweet potato mash and some roasted cherry tomatoes. These made a really delicious low carb lunch for the coming week. The salmon ended up really nice and succulent because wrapping it in baking paper really helped to gently steam the fish and seal in the flavours. Needless to say, the loza loafs were also super delicious. And so I hope you enjoy these clean, healthy, yummy, licious recipes. As always, please feel free to share, like and comment because I really love connecting with y'all. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and connect with me on Facebook and Instagram. Happy food prepping everyone and have an awesome day. Bye!